and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for a special stream today. We have our Corset 2020 standard set review that we're going to be doing. We're going to be breaking them up into colors. As you can see, we'll be going through the regular order of white, then blue, then black, red, green, and then we'll be lumping together multicolor artifact and lands all together. All right, so we're going to be going through, we're going to be giving a letter grade to each card in the entire set uh, f you know, with standard in mind. So like that's that's where this uh, review is going to be really focused on. Um, down below in the in the uh, info in, in the in the information, if you're watching on YouTube, you can find the spreadsheet that has all the grades because you'll be watching this later on. So while we're doing this, I'm going to be filling in the spreadsheet with it with the different grades that we give the cards and everything, and and we'll also have the grading scale uh, there in the spreadsheet. But I'll go ahead and and read it off uh, here. Also, to start with, we're going to be going kind of the U.S. school system ways of A, B, C, D, or F, or if it's just a limited card. So an A is a format staple among multiple decks. These are cards in the format that you can expect to play against when you're building new decks. So like these are, there's not very many A's that are given out, but these are like from, from examples, I, I like giving the examples from the previous set. So from last set, our example of A's could be like Teferi Time Raveler. Nissa, who shakes the world, Narset, Parter avails. You know, those are cards you have in mind whenever you're putting together um, other decks and everything. And those are uh, cards you expect to play against quite a bit. A B is a defining card in a single, singular, highly played deck, such as like Finale of Promise. Uh, it's a it's a card that's played a lot in is it is it Phoenix, and it's kind of a defining card in that that deck, but it's not played very much other places. Or a B can be a role player that sees play among multiple decks, kind of like Paradise Druid. You know, it's just kind of in, it's a role player in a lot of decks. So that's a B. Or it's a very common sideboard card. So maybe like a Dovin's Veto or an Enter the God Eternals, something like that. Um, a C would be a powerful card that sees some play in fringe decks. That'd be like Bolas of Citadel, for example, there. A card that is common in a highly played deck. So like maybe like Massacre Girl is my example there you know like massacre girls played in the command of the dread horde deck it's pretty common there but it's not uh, necessarily common throughout the format or a fringe sideboard card so like a, a tibalt uh, rakish instigator you know that's a sideboard card you see in in, re in like the red decks but not like a ton of other places okay a d is a card that you'll sometimes see in standard but it's kind of underpowered so like a soul diviner kind of card or a Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage, or maybe like a more janky build around card, maybe like an Evolution Sage kind of thing. So those are like your Ds. And then an F is a card that just really shouldn't see standard play. And the F rating is only for rares and mythics. Um, so cards like Silent Submersible, Single Combat, Mizium Tank, like those are Fs. Um, and then Limited is, the Limited rating are commons and uncommons that won't see any standard play. Okay. All right, so that's our grading scale. We're going to go through all the cards. So let's just start it off at the top here with Aerial Assault. We have two and a white for a sorcery. Destroy target tapped creature. You gain one life for each creature you control with flying. So we're just kicking off the, um, the stream here with just a limited card. right? Like that's, That card's just for limited. That's not going to see any standard play. All right, we have a Johnny Strength of the Pride. All right, we've got a Planeswalker here. Hey, what's up, Gatsby? Um, Otison, hey, also. All right, Johnny's Strength of the Pride. So two white, white for five loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control plus the number of Planeswalkers you control. All right, so let's, let's kind of just talk about like the, the abilities here separate because instead of like reading through all of it then forgetting like what one, one of them does so the plus one ability so four four mana going up to six loyalty right away is quite strong like that's that's really where you want to be for um uh for a four mana planeswalker but it does say the so it says you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control plus the number of planeswalkers you control so you're going to want to have like some creatures and planeswalkers out because you know if you're playing a johnny strength of the pride on an empty battlefield and taking up you're not really going to be doing anything um hey jacques 
uh, so the the minus two. All right, so so you know we're definitely gonna need to be able to play this in some kind of deck that's like has a lot of other creatures or planeswalkers. The minus two does make basically a Johnny's Pride Mate. Like that's what it does. Um, so that's pretty awesome. A Johnny's Pride Mate usually costs two mana and is a pretty pretty solid card. You know, it's a it's an okay card for two mana. So for four mana, you can you get your a Johnny's Pride Mate plus you have your a Johnny sticking around at three loyalty. That's pretty good. And then it also has a zero ability. So you can do all three abilities immediately. Zero, if you have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, exile a Johnny and each artifact and creature your opponent's control. Not too big on that ability. I mean, it could come up, but like if your opponent has a lot of creatures, you probably don't have 15 more life than you started with. As we know, artifacts aren't really played that much in, in standard. Um, and uh, so... It's mostly about the creatures, but yeah, if your opponent has a, a good amount of creatures, then uh, yeah, you probably don't have that much life. But that can come up, though. You know, if the battlefield stalled out and everything, and you have other life gain stuff, that can come up. But yeah, this looks kind of solid. Like so, so basically, what what are we really getting with this card? You're basically getting a Johnny's Pride Mate most all the time. You're basically always going to minus get minus two whenever you whenever it enters. Get a Johnny's Pride Mate. And then start ticking up, making the Pride Mate bigger. You may minus again. Like, it, it does get to minus twice and stick around, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, Fog Effects and Life Gain. Yeah, so it really kind of depends of, like, if if you can make, like, a, a Life Gain deck actually work. Um, and, you know, Creature Heavy deck. But this could see some play. And that kind of stuff. That definitely seems like a really fringe archetype. This doesn't seem like something that's going to, like, be breaking through the top tier of Standard. Um, yeah, if you, you do pair with Command the Dread Horde, could be a good, yeah, white black. You pair with Command the Dread Horde. Uh, yeah. So since we're we're looking at something that's like you know kind of like a maybe a powerful card in fringe decks, like a Bolus of Citadel kind of thing, I'm gonna go ahead. Let's go and give a Johnny like a C here. It could be a fringe deck, or it could yeah maybe it's more of like a a. A janky build around card kind of thing. Also, we'll go with like C minus. I kind of like that. We'll go like C minus because yeah, it's kind of close to like the D of like the janky build around kind of thing. But yeah, we could have it with Orzov and Selesnya and everything. Um, there's not much, not not much upside here. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't really see it ever being bigger than that. Um, So I'm gonna I'm gonna be kind of uh, I'm gonna be making uh, notes like also on on the spreadsheet here, and that's what I'm gonna kind of say about it, Johnny. I don't really see it ever being like a an A or a B kind of thing, you know. Like I don't think this is a card that can really break out. <laughs> All right, Kid Meister, we'll we'll get there. All right, Ancestral Blade is up next. One in a white artifact equipment. When it enters the battlefield, you make a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token, then it attach Ancestral Blade to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has equip one. So this is pretty interesting. So you can basically think of this as like a two-mana 2-2, two, two, right? Because like whenever it enters, you're making a 1-1 one, one and attaching it. So it's a two-mana 2-2 two, two that has this blade attached that you can pay one mana and equip it other places. Does that mean it's going to be in standard probably not this is probably just a limited card but it's it's really not that bad like if you kind of like compare it to like tithe taker is like a two mana two one that whenever it died you'd get an extra one one this is like your two two that whenever it dies you don't get that extra one one but instead you get this like blade here where you can equip this card over to other things I could see this seeing just a tiny bit of standard play, to be honest. Yeah. I could see that being a, a, a tiny bit of standard play. It's really not that bad. Um, so I don't think this is just a limited only card. Yeah, if there's like a if you're yeah, if you're playing like an an artifact deck that you need like more artifacts kind of thing. Like this is an artifact that's also a creature, like this yeah, which is which is really not bad. So if you if you really have an artifacts matter kind of deck, um, that's true. City's blessing and Tefer like to fairy bounce still leave something behind. That is true. Um, so I think maybe 
a, so D, a card you'll sometimes see in standard, but it's underpowered. Maybe that, but maybe even a little bit more underpowered. I'm going to go D minus here for Ancestral Blade, but that's a card to think about. Y'all are a little higher on it. You're on like D, C, D, uh, D plus, C minus. I think I'm going to go D minus. You may see that card, but. Um, yeah. Limited, it seems pretty good. I notice he's pretty good. All right, Angel of Vitality. Um, yeah, okay. All right, y'all are convincing me. We'll go up to D. We'll go up to a D with um, Ancestral Blade. Y'all are convincing me there. All right, Angel of Vitality. Two and a white, two, two flyer. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. So what that reads is every time you would gain life, you gain an extra. So if you gain three life, you gain now with angel out, you gain four and so on. Angel of Vitality gets plus two, plus two, as long as you have 25 or more life. So all you have to do is get five more life than your starting life total for standard. And you have a three mana, four, four flyer, which is, which is definitely a good body. Think about um gruel spellbreaker being three mana and you get a four four trample this would be a four four flyer if that's consistent that's going to be pretty strong here um but if you're you know like you do have to like get to five more life uh than that so like getting that on turn three as a four four is going to be pretty tough because that means gain turn one and two you you would have already had to have uh gained five life which is which is kind of tough it does work very well with some other cards in this set. We've seen with, like, definitely kind of have a combo with, like, Bishop of Wings. Whenever you an angel enters, you would gain five life. And so, like, if you do get to curve Bishop of Wings into Angel of Vitality, then it, then it does turn into a 4-4 flyer. So it does work really well with this card. Um, plus, those two together work really well with Resplendent Angel also. Um, so it does, yeah, it does have that. Uh, so, you know, like... I expect to try some Angel of Vitalities and everything, but overall, it's it's kind of weak for standard. I, like that that combination is awesome, but it's just like the other times you're just p playing a three mana two two flyer, uh, which is going to happen a large amount of games if you, even if you have those together, um, which is which is really a weak card there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and go with a D here for Angel of Vitality. I think it kind of seems like it's it's on like that, you know, Soul Diviner, Evolution Sage, uh, power level there. Hey, no decks today. Once again, we're doing our Corset 2020 review all stream. So that's what we're doing all day. We're going to go through every single card here in the set. All right, we got Angelic Gift up next. One in a white. Enchant creature, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchant creature has flying. So this could be playable if we had like a Boggles or Bogles. We had a Bogles type deck in standard. I don't think that there's any Bogles type deck unless there's some stuff in this set that I don't, you know, I haven't seen yet. Um, but if there's like a Bogles type deck, give your creature flying and cycle. That's where that could be playable. But yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and go with the limited rating here for this card. We'll, we'll give it the L. Um, but there is a spot that that could, um, could be good there. Good for Popper. I could see that. I could see that in Popper. Um, I so am I gonna, I'm gonna have to do let's let me try this. Hmm. I'm gonna have to format this a little better, or somehow. How did this work? All right, I'll, I'll have to figure out that later. Sorry. <clears throat> hey, Dragon Ranch, you have not missed very much. We just started. Uh, hey, JMS. So 
So, you know, we've, we're only just a few cards in. Um, and you can see our grading scale here. For draft sealed, um, I'm not, yeah, we'll be kind of, we'll basically be doing just standard here. I'm not much of a draft sealed player myself, so I I wouldn't give like the, the best pointers, I don't think, um, on that. But, you know, maybe we'll mention that with some of the cards. Uh, but I'd have to really look at like the whole set as, as a whole and everything. And sealed's the kind of stuff that I, I like getting some practice in first before, you know, just looking at the cards is kind of difficult the first time. Uh, anyway, we got Apostle of Purifying Light, one in a white for a 2-1 uh, human cleric that is protection from black, and you can pay two and exile target card from a graveyard. I think this could see some standard play. Like, protection is... Is definitely powerful. So a two mana two one, you know, is perfectly fine. As we kind of talked about Tithe Taker before, um, yeah, getting that that protection from black in the right matchup could definitely be good. And and two drops are, are nice with like a Johnny adversary of tyrants. Um, it also has, of course, that exile target card from a graveyard. There's a lot of graveyard stuff. You know, whether it's Arclight Phoenix, you want to exile, or maybe you start exiling cards because of Command the Dread Horde and everything. So this. This could work. Uh, no, this can't stop Nexus. No, Nexus never actually goes to the graveyard, honestly. Uh, no, and protection does not stop from cards like Cry of the Carnarium, um, because that that's Cry of the Carnarium is just like a an effect that that uh, happens to every single creature on the battlefield. It's not targeting any specific thing, and this protection from black means it can't be targeted, basically. Um, so. So yeah, so um, I think I think this seems like a C. Like this could be a, a maybe like a a card that is um, a powerful card that kind of sees some play in some fringe decks or a fringe sideboard card kind of thing. Yeah, you will get like a nice C here for Apostle of Purifying Light. All right, we got Battalion Foot Soldier. Two and a white, two two. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards named Battalion Foot Soldier. Reveal them, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So this is just Legion Conquistador, same kind of thing. Uh, you know, Legion Conquistador is not standard playable. Neither will Battalion Foot Soldier be, um, but it's very good in limited. Uh, if you have, uh, especially if you have, you know, like three or more of them. When you only have two, it's not as good. It's still, you know, like a, a three mana two two that draws a card that draws you another three mana two two. But yeah, once you start getting three or more, uh, it's very good there in limited. All right, Bishop of Wings. We have two mana one four. Whenever it enters whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain four life, and whenever an angel you control dies, create a one one white spirit creature token with flying. This card is awesome. I love this card. This is this is like, you know, I've played plenty of angel decks. I really like the like the angels that are in standard right now, and this is the exact kind of two drop that the angels are wanting. I the one thing I don't like about the card is the white white for the mana cost. That's that's kind of prohibitive there, to be honest. That one's kind of tough. Uh, so that's gonna really lead it to just like one and two mana or one and two color decks. Um, but with a black white, I could see this even like black white can kind of support this because uh, they're getting the temples also that we'll see later on. Uh, there's the the black white temple will be in the the in this set also, so there'll be twelve dual lands that will help this out. Um, but yeah, really good really good uh, synergy with of course the angel of vitality that we talked about, resplendent angel. It's just a, a good blocker. A one four is a really good blocker against the aggro decks. It holds the ground well for your um for your angels to take over in the air so pretty nice stuff there for our bishop of wings um that's still definitely like a a fringe deck kind of thing like that's something that i'm really excited about i really like the card but i don't i don't expect this to see a whole bunch of play in the top tier of the format probably so going to go with C again here, um, but definitely a card that I'm really glad was designed like this. I like that one. 
All right, we got brought back. Okay, so we got another white, white card. It's an instant, though. Choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Return them to the battlefield tapped. You got a B plus here. Ooh, so how much play is this really going to see? So we know the obvious thing, of course, is Lotus Field, right? Where Lotus Field um, is a land that we'll talk about later that whenever it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice two other lands. And so you can float two white mana, play your Lotus Field, sacrifice two other lands, and then you can play your brought back and bring them back. Um, so like, is that, is that something that like is going to, like, are you really building around that? Like, is if you are like, you're, you're playing a, a really white heavy deck because you know, it's white, white, and then in your white heavy deck, what are we doing with like that extra mana whenever you do get that payoff? Um, standard is definitely a format that's all about mana. It's all about spending more mana than opponents. And so like brought back with Lotus Field, that is a really good combo. Besides that, brought back can just kind of be, um, yeah, y'all y'all are having some some good good things there. It can just kind of be like a a. Uh, a dive down type of type of thing or like something that you know like saves or like you know uh i don't know like a sheltering light that's the card it's kind of like a sheltering light type thing for for two permanents um it's like a double sheltering light like basically uh bring back anything but yeah they are permanent so yeah priest of forgotten gods this works really well with now priest of forgotten gods of course does add black black to your mana pool and this it costs white white to activate so like those are those are kind of a little rough um Yeah, and then, but yeah, you can also just protect stuff. Yeah, it's a good counter for Elder Spell, which is true. Um, and then, yeah, your Angels, you can protect your Angels, like your Shalais, your Lyras, think, uh, stuff like that. Um, so, like, I don't know, if, but, like, I don't know if, like, Esper decks are going to really be wanting to play this kind of thing. Yeah, you could, you could have Kaya's Wrath with brought back. But it's just, like, all those kind of scenarios honestly or like things that like so like basically you had to play your shalai or you know like have your planeswalkers in play or whatever and they they elder spell your planeswalkers you just have to have your two white mana available also so it's like you were holding up two white mana so you weren't really playing on curve um honestly i don't i don't really see like regular mid-range decks just kind of playing this card as like a double protection spell basically to like bring things back i i think that brought back is is basically only going to be used in like lotus field decks um when you say things don't have to be put into the graveyard from the battlefield right well uh, for this card they do because see it says Two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So you have to only use them that this turn. So no, it does does say that. So yeah, no, discard. No, that doesn't work. Um Yeah, so like an ETB heavy deck, but then it's like, how are you like so maybe a sacrifice ETB and sacrifice heavy deck with like plague crafters and things like that? But still, if you kind of think of like how standard goes, is like while you're doing that kind of stuff, your opponent is going to be just like playing a whole bunch of mana creatures and then Nyssa and then like mass manipulation or whatever, or, or you know, like whatever standard decks are doing. Um, I think it's going to be pretty hard to like have your threats and have your, your mana. Even if you think about like, like your normal match against Esper. Um, I, I don't think this will, I, I, I'm not seeing too much play for this card except for with like your Lotus Field type thing if you're trying to do something there to be honest. Um, but yeah, I don't yeah, when you're behind it's not doing anything too much. I yeah, I honestly don't think this this card is too good for standard. And yeah, bus says a D. I'm kind of thinking that too, honestly. I'm thinking a D. Um,
I'm going to write like maybe combo with Lotus field. for that, for the notes there. All right, Cavalier of Dawn. Two white, 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 four, six, Vigilance. When Cavalier of Dawn enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. So when, then whenever whenever Cavalier of Dawn dies, you return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, yeah, this is your favorite card in the set. This is this is really good. Like that that first clause, destroy any non-land permanent and then make a three-three. Really, like that is really strong. Like so, that's Beast Within basically. So Beast Within is a three mana instant that does that. This is for five mana you know two mana more you do have this four six vigilance also so a couple things that are kind of holding this card back is the triple white with the casting costs is kind of tough especially when we're in like this multicolored standard format with like the three color decks kind of being everywhere um that's pretty tough but yeah um some things this works really well with it works well very well with history of Benalia, yes um, you know, you can get your enchantment card there. It works really well with Oath of Kaya. That's a, that's a really good card for this, like where you can you can have your Oath of Kaya kill something. Later on, you have your Cavalier of Dawn destroy your Oath of Kaya, so you make another three three. So you can make like a four six and a three three there, and then whenever it dies, you get your Oath of Kaya back. Um, that's true. Beast within is any permanent. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, but this is this is a good card. Like with all these Planeswalkers everywhere. Cavalier of Dawn gives you like an answer to to any of the planeswalkers also. Um, you know, being able to just kill destroy their planeswalker and make just turn it into a 3-3 is really nice. It's a really good ETB effect there. Um, so this this could be a card for, you know, anything for like uh, Neoforms, Zagana decks, you know, things that really want ETB stuff also, that wants removal, you know, like white doesn't really have much creature removal and so that that gives you something here um yeah and it has has a good body too and it does yeah it does work with arcbow yeah putting putting cavalier or dawn in into play off arcbow is nice and if you have if you have an extra arcbow uh in your graveyard like whenever it dies you can put it back into your hand that's true so you have more fodder for an arcbow um, <laughs> you can destroy their one one to give them a three three. Yeah, so it has it has a lot of a lot of good stuff going for it. Now, that being said, five mana cards in standard and especially in white are really really strong. We have Liar Dawnbringer, we have God Eternal Oketra, we have really good creatures. Um, the thing that Cavalier Dawn has over those other ones is that it does have an, like an immediate effect whenever it enters. You know, it is turning any non-land permanent into a 3-3. So that's very good. But we'll kind of have to see. I'm I'm kind of scared of the, the triple white mana cost uh, for it. it. Definitely kind of scared there. I think this could be... Um, this could be uh, something... Like, this could be the kind of card that, that does get better after rotation kind of thing. Like, whenever the the competition for the top end of different standard decks kind of decreases some uh, especially cards like lyra and stuff rotating out so this, this could help this could be helped um in the fall uh, can you explain the part when you are ahead or in top deck mode getting rid of your used enchantments like oh to play two creatures yeah yeah so that's yeah i talked about that part um so yeah whenever yeah you can yeah i talked about how it works really well with oh making a four six and a three three that whenever the four six dies you bring that back um yeah there's there's a lot to do uh with this card for sure um but 
that being said, of course, the, the cards in standard are really, really good. Um, I, th I feel like this is somewhere between a B and a C. Um, to be honest, like, like with like looking at like the, the rate, the grading scale of how, how we've done it. I think we're kind of between those two and probably a little closer to a C. I'm going to go with a, yeah, I think either B minus C plus. Um, it really depends on how, I think we'll go, yeah, B minus is good. We'll go B minus. I think that's, that's where you're kind of looking at. Um, Cause yeah, like we, we do have like a real, you know, a whole lot of real competition there in five mana and the white, white, white and everything. Uh, but Cavalier Dawn, definitely sweet. I like it. All right, Dawning Angel, four and a white, three, two, flyer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. That's five mana for a three, two flyer. That is just a limited card. Let's give that one an L. Daybreak Chaplain. This is a reprint. I, I don't know if this one was an M19. I think this was. Uh, if not, it was in other core sets before. But it's a two mana, one, three life linker. That's just a limited card. That's not for standard either. We have Devout Decree, uh, one in a white, sorcery, exile, target creature or planeswalker that's black or red, and you get to scry one. That scry one's really nice addition to this. This definitely seems like a good sideboard card, um, for sure, if if black and red permanents are really uh, bugging you. You know, like if you, if like Rekindling Phoenix has you down, for example, um, that's, you know, like this is a, a perfect sideboard card for that um so yeah i think very common sideboard card is a b so this this looks like a b um right now there's not a ton of like black and red creatures and planeswalkers that are like really important to be exiling there's of course the nickel boluses and like i said rekindling phoenix um there's like like that's kind of like Right now, the Bant colors are really, uh, really uh, kind of controlling standard. Sorry, from the permanent point of view, the most people play mostly black cards for like Thought Erasure and Command the Dread Horde and uh, removal spells and things like that. Elder Spell, but there's not really a lot of black Planeswalkers. Uh, but yeah, there are the new Chandras incoming. That's that's good there. Oh, and then yeah, the Gruul decks. Um, yeah, could you know, playing Ravager Worm or uh, even just getting rid of Gruul Spellbreaker is nice. Um, and the Domries, like, yeah, getting rid of Domries. Sure, you're only saving one mana, but yeah. Good solid sideboard card. Yeah, poor Ilharg. All right, we got Disenchant, one in a white, instant, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Um, another sideboard card. It's This one's a little more fringe sideboard. So I think fringe sideboard card is a C. Here, there's there's usually other options whenever you're trying to destroy artifacts and enchantments uh, for your sideboard. Uh, there, um, <laughs> yeah, disenchant is pretty sweet. In fact, devout decree. I'm gonna go B minus. I don't know if it'll be that popular because because like we were talking about how red and black, but like it's it's an okay sideboard. It's a I don't know if it'll be like super popular sideboard card. I'll go B minus here, and then yeah, C with disenchant. Eternal isolation, one in a white sorcery. Put target creature with power four or greater on the bottom of its owner's library. So it is nice to, you know, it's it's not exile, which would be the best, but putting it on the bottom of its owner's library is kind of nice. Could this see a little bit of sideboard play? Maybe not. Oh, another good card for Devout Decree is Arclight Phoenix. That's a good card for Devout Decree. Man, Arclight Phoenix is getting really hammered in this set. There's so many things against Arclight Phoenix. So Eternal Isolation gets rid of the gods. Yes, except for Oketra, right? It's like it doesn't get rid of Oketra. Doesn't get rid of Arclight Phoenix. Two cards that you'd like to put to the bottom of its owner's library. Um, but it gets rid of the other gods. But does that mean that we're really playing this card? Hmm. I guess it kind of depends on like how popular 
large creatures get, then it could show up as a sideboard card kind of thing. So I'm going to go like C minus. Because again, like, it's usually other things, but if, if like your Kefnets um, and your Ilhargs and your Bantus and your Ronuses for some reason kind of start going crazy in standard, maybe after rotation, then, then this could be an answer there. But yeah, Kefnet is the, this is, Kefnet and Rekindling Phoenix are like the, the two cards that this is quite good against, uh, right now in standard, which is not that many. I guess you get rid of like a crisis or whatever. Um, all right, we got Fencing Ace, one in a white for a 1-1 one, one double strike. This is another reprint. Uh, I remember this one. Uh, this is the kind of card that you want to like put a whole bunch of equipment on and make it really big with like equipment and stuff. This is this is your Bogle type card. Um, so <laughs> I don't I don't really expect to see that too much in standard. I'll go ahead, and, but maybe you do. Yeah, it does have the, there is that big hammer card. I don't remember exactly what the big hammer card does. Um, that, that is a card in the set that we'll, we'll see that later. Um, but yeah, this could be a Bogle kind of thing that you just try to power it up, kind of just Voltron your fencing ace and make it really big and give it trample or evasion, give it flying. Um, I don't think this is really a, a feather type card because usually just um, like the instance that feather is playing isn't really making fencing ace good enough. Um, let's see. I guess I don't have a link for the for like if you want this this link that I'm using for like the cards here uh just type in google like uh you know like uh corset 2020 uh wizards card preview or image gallery there you go image gallery that's a good one but this is where we have all the grades that have it also has all the cards on our google sheet we have a picture of all the cards here too All right, it's uh, Gauntlets of Light. Oh, yeah, we do have... That is true. We do have Swiftblade Vindicator in the format also, which is just, like, so much better than Fencing Ace. Hmm. All right. Never mind. So should we just give this an L, then, for Limited? Yeah, I'll just go with an L, then, for Limited, for Fencing Ace. All right. Gauntlets of Light, two and a white, enchantment, aura, enchant creature, gets plus zero, plus two, and assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and has three mana, untap this creature. I guess there's some kind, there could be a janky combo with this card if you have a creature that taps for three mana, such as um, Incubation Druid. If you have an Incubation Druid with a counter on it, it taps for three mana. So you can put this on it, and then you also spend your three and untap it. Um, so you can get infinite untaps. With Marwyn, Marwyn is going to add just all green mana. So you won't have, like, the white to be able to untap your Marwyn. Um, I don't know what you're doing with a card that taps and untaps infinitely, an Incubation Druid with this. I don't know if there's any card in Standard that says... <clears throat> like whenever your creature untaps, you mill your opponent for one card or whatever, and then you could make an infinite combo deck like that. I don't know. <laughs> yes, this is yeah. So that's just L for limited. Not probably not even in limited, but glaring Aegis, Aegis, Aegis. Uh, I've I've seen this card before too. This is a reprint. Uh, one mana enchant creature when glaring Aegis enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, and enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three. There must be some kind of enchantment sub theme here. This is again just a limited card. I'm not expecting this card to see any standard play. All right, we got God's Willing. Theros constructed 
all star god's willing one mana instant target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn scry one this card is really good this is the feather card yep this is the card this this card is perfect for feather you get that scry in there also protection is so much better than make it indestructible or anything also because the protection can make your creature unblockable so like even if you have like the the smaller creatures like the the two drops or um your dreadhorde arcanist like your dreadhorde arcanist attacking absolutely loves this card because you know you get to make it um make your arcanist protection from whatever color so like whatever color that your opponent has blockers of um it works really well for that and this is honestly this is just kind of a good card like i could see like my angel deck or playing like a mid-range angel deck i can see just playing god's willings um you know like that's that's it's better than it's like this is again better than sheltering light for a lot of reasons think about like when you play like your lyra dawnbringer and your opponent plays to fairy and tucks your lyra dawnbringer this god's willing can give your dawnbringer protection from light you know and and uh you know make it so it can't be tucked or from like you know an effect that's already on the battlefield like uh five mana vivian that would just destroy flyers you know give them protection from green um and yeah you get to attack through uh this card is awesome like this and it's just one mana instant like this is a really good trick um yeah protects from exile cards too like fastest contempt and everything uh really really solid card here so as far as grade um Honestly, I think it's better than a B. I think this would be... I think this is a B just simply for a feather deck. But I think that this is... This kind of goes to more decks than just a feather deck. Is this an A? No. I don't know if it's a format staple kind of thing. But I think it's better than a B. So I think we're at like B plus, A minus kind of thing. Um, I think B plus... Yeah, I think B plus is a pretty good grade here. For God's willing. Um... Uh, I think this is for more than just Feather. That's what I'm going to kind of write here. Like that's a, it's a, it's a good card. Yeah, and it was good in, in Theros, Standard, and everything also. It's just a good card. No, Protection doesn't save you from Carnarium, no. <laughs> no, nothing saves you from Cry of the Carnarium, basically. Is this better than uh, uh, Blossoming Defense? from Kaladesh. It's right on that level. If I had to pick one that's better, I would probably say God's willing, but they are really close. And so yeah, you saw how like if you're if you played in Kaladesh standard, so with blossoming defense, the plus 2 plus 2 is really nice. Protection is better than hexproof. By, so like God's willing is definitely better there because like protection like I said gives your creature unblockable and so on like protection is definitely a lot better than hexproof and then like the plus two plus two is nice does that match does that like is I think plus two plus two and hexproof by those two together is better than protection but then you also get the scry one here with the God's willing and so I think that probably puts it over the top so I think God's willing is probably a little better than blossoming defense um All right, uh, we got Griffin Protector, three and a white, two, three. Flyer, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Griffin Protector gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. All right, I don't think I'll probably ever read that card again. Limited. All right, we got the Griffin Sentinel, also another limited card, three mana, one, three, Flying Vigilance. Not, not cards that are designed for standard there. All right, Hanged Exe Executioner. Two and a white. It's kind of a gruesome picture. Like, I don't know. That's, that's a weird picture. Anyway, two and a white, one, one flyer. All right, just starting there, a three mana, one, one flyer. That is a terrible, terrible body. So this card is going to have to be awesome to make up for that. Uh, when Hanged Executor enters the battlefield, you create another 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. All right, so you get you get two 1-1s one, for three mana. Um, not, not very good, 
but we get that. So what else do we do? Four mana, exile it, exile target creature. So it could so in order to exile a creature, you're gonna have to spend seven mana total between two activations, and you get an extra one one. Really, bus? You think this card's a sleeper? I'm not seeing it. I don't. I think that uh, the one one bodies is just too too small, honestly. Um, I d I don't think this card will will see any play. To be honest, I don't. I don't think this is a, a standard card. Um, this is just too small. Like one ones just don't. They don't matter. Like these are like what you get. It's like whenever you kill a Seraph of the Scales, you get your two one ones. That's not worth like three mana on its own, even if it has like that four mana ability. So a Spirit or Flying Tribal. So if you're trying to play Safara, like would would you possibly put this in a Safara deck, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Sephira, I think Safara. Like where you want a lot of, a lot of flying creatures. I still don't think so. It's just, this is just too weak of a card. Of course, there's obviously there's Chain Whirler and that kind of stuff too. But yeah, one ones are just too weak these days. Yeah, I, I know that's no that's a that's a good question. Yeah, because that's something to to think about. So thanks. Yeah, that's a good good spitball there. Spirit of Flying Tribal. So I'm gonna go with an F here for Hanged Executioner. I don't, I don't think that card's gonna see any player really want to. It's just, it's, it really is too small. Think about like Elvish Rejuvenator is like think about Elvish Rejuvenator, three mana one one, that also ramps you. That card, like that ramping that you get from Elvish Rejuvenator is really really valuable. Like that's that's actually just like that's worth three mana. Like, you know, there's like rampant growth for two mana, of course. But like three mana, that's not a bad effect for three mana still, because you get any land like in the in your top uh, five cards, I guess you get to look. So it's not just basics, you know. You get to put any land. Like that's actually a pretty valuable card. Yet that card sees no play because the one ones are just, one one is just so weak at that for like that mana cost. Um. All right, Herald of the Sun, four white white four four flyer. Uh, Four mana, put a 1-1 one, one counter on another target creature you control with flying. Awesome art. Angels are cool. This one's just for limited. We got Inspired Charge. Two white white creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. This card is currently in standard. Sees no play. Uh, not even in like really, really fringe decks or anything. So another just limited card then. Inspiring Captain. I think this card's in standard right now. I'm not sure. Definitely a card I've seen before, though. Uh, three and a white, three, three ETB creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Another limited card. All right, we got Ley Line of Sanctity. <laughs> I mean, this is like my first time kind of looking at the art. So it's like Stonehenge with a big X on it. It's like... Like, you can't find Stonehenge, I guess. You have to have a big X marks the spot there <laughs> for Stonehenge. All right, two white white. If it's in your opener hand, opening hand, you can begin with it on the battlefield, and you have Hexproof. We've seen this be a, a pretty important sideboard card in Modern. Will this be a good sideboard card in Standard? We'll see. I think... I think against Mono Red, yeah. Mon like this is the this is an awesome card against Mono Red. I don't I don't really know any other matchup that you want this honestly, besides against Mono Red. Yes, I know it can stop Thought Erasure. Like if you think about against Esper, you can stop them from Thought Erasuring you. Uh, but like you do have to have the ley line in your opener, and then you start on the battlefield. Then like let's say that they do have Thought Erasure at that point. Well, they're, even though they don't get to cast their one Thought Erasure, you already spent a card with your Ley Line, so it's kind of like their Thought Erasure took your Ley Line. Like it's, it's, they, you're still kind of trading one for one at that point, so it's not really even help. Like the Ley Line's not even really helping you that much. And 
that's assuming that they have a, a a hand with thought erasure they could also just be drawing you know the other 56 cards in their deck and then your ley line didn't do anything and besides that like let's say that you like you know you play you play like a couple of turns like let's say they turn two thought erasure you because you don't have your ley line and then like turn three or turn four you just draw ley line of sanctity it's just like the most dead card you've ever seen in your life and it's just like it's just a horrible, horrible draw step. Like you're just not going to want this against Esper decks, kind of thing. And then yeah, you all, you of course have your Teferi, like your Teferi's bounce it also. Uh, this is just not a card against Esper that you'll ever want. Um, so using it against Is it Phoenix? Now I think you'd much rather have Leyline of the Void against Is it Phoenix than Leyline of Sanctity, kind of thing. I think this is basically just for mono red and standard. I don't really see anything. Oh, so this is like against just against mono red and if you don't have and yeah if you have a whole bunch of creatures you're not going to really want this because yeah like they can just use their um burn spells on your creatures so it's kind of like against mono red and if you are like an esper control deck for example if you're like a, if basically if you're like an esper control deck or like a grixis control uh like you're a control deck that's like not playing creatures like like a grixis control against against uh mono red for example where if you start with this on the battlefield, then they can't use their burn spells against you. You have hexproof, uh, and then you try to kill all their th other things. Um. So, yeah, that's that's pretty narrow, to be honest, pretty narrow. And so, I mean, this could be like a fringe sideboard card, basically, for that. But like that's. That's kind of about it. So I'm going with like fringe sideboard card. So like C is our letter grade here. I'll write for a note here. Basically only for mono red. How do I? Hmm. I'll ask that later. All right, we got Luxidon, Life Chanter, five and a white, four, six. I have not read this card yet. It's an elephant cleric. What's going on with this art over here? It's like real ghosty or something. All right, let's see what this card does. So when Luxon and Life Chanter enters the battlefield, you may have your life total become the total toughness of creatures you control. I guess that could be something that you would want to do at some points. I don't know if that's really worth a six mana card. Let's see what else we got. Six mana, the Luxon and Life Chanter gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is your life total. So it has no kind of keywords whatsoever, no evasion uh, no trample, no no nothing, no vigilance, no, like nothing, no keywords anywhere here. Yeah, I think I'm <laughs> thinking this is an F as well as y'all are saying. I don't don't see where we would ever want to play this in standard. <laughs> it's an A for my elephant tribal deck. <laughs> All right, we got the loyal Pegasus, one mana, two one flyer, which that's awesome stats. However, it can't attack or block alone. Oh, uh, that's big, uh, big negative for the card. Um, will this see play in mono white? No. Just no. After rotation, white aggro. If mono white's losing a lot of one drops, maybe. But to start with, no. To start with, this is not seeing standard play. Um. We do. That is true. We do have this. We do have Safara, so could this see play in a Safara deck? I think you kind of just rather have Healer's Hawk. You just want to make sure that your creature can actually attack and block. This is not going to be able to attack or block quite a bit. Um, yeah, so you're probably just rather playing Healer's Hawks. Like, do you want Healer's Hawks and Lo Loyal Pegasus? Are you like trying to go that crazy? 
with like your flyers. I mean, that could be, you know, like a, a very, very fringe, you know, like a, just basically something that somebody wants to do, but, um, well, I think this is an, I think this is just an L. I think this is a limited card. No, I, I don't think this is good in mono white, honestly. That can't attack or block alone clause is, is really, really tough. The other one drops are good. As as I was just saying, like maybe yeah, like if a whole lot of one drops are are rotating out, you know, maybe you have to reimagine the deck after rotation and loyal Pegasus can fit somewhere in there. But we've seen loyal Pegasus in standard before, it didn't really do anything. I guess it did you you would like just randomly play like when I when you play standard before, you'd randomly play against people that were playing some lo loyal Pegasuses. So it shouldn't just be an L, I guess. So we'll go with like D minus. I guess. People will have, like, it'll be a card that you'll sometimes see in standard kind of thing, but it's underpowered. Yeah, so yeah, you have the O3 card in mono white that's useless until you've ascended. Well, that card at least blocks still kind of well, and... Uh, and whenever you have ascended, that thing's a huge threat. Like that's a that turns into a really big creature. Um, but yeah, it still it still blocks and everything. Like this does just nothing if if they're like using removal spells on your other creatures, and everything. All right, all right, I'll go I'll go D at least. Okay, y'all are kind of all right. We're go we'll move up our rating a little bit. We'll go D for loyal Pegasus. Ed card you'll sometimes see in standard but is kind of underpowered we got the master splicer three and a white one one whenever it enters the battlefield creates a three three colorless golem artifact creature token and golems you control get plus one plus one they're bringing this one back from was it new phyrexia was this card i used to draft this card all the time there's a good golem sub theme in new phyrexia uh this i think the as far as like in standard, how this card could see play is if you're playing like a Vanifar or Neoform deck and you want like a, a creature like this, like this is a this is a pretty good creature to Neoform away. You know, like you play it, you get your extra 3-3 three, three, and then you, or like, or Vanifar, uh, then you sacrifice it and go get something else kind of thing. I, that's like the one place that I could see this being, seeing play because you still, you still get your extra body. Uh, even whenever you sacrifice it, you get get to keep the three three around. That's about it. Um, and yeah, so that'd be like a really fringe card in a fringe archetype <laughs> that that may not make the cut, but like could possibly. Uh, so yeah, I'll give it the the L for limited, but we'll go. We'll type maybe. With Neoform slash Vanifar. All right, moment of heroism. One in a white instant target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains lifelink until end of turn. That's a limited trick. It's not a bad limited trick. So that's a limited trick. All right, Moreland in Inquisitor. Inquisitor. There we go, Inquisitor. Moreland, Inquisitor. Uh, one in a white for a two-two. Whenever, and then you can sorry, uh, one in a white for a two-two, and then two in a white. You can pay for Moreland in Inquisitor to gain first strike until end of turn. That's limited. If you need a two drop for a, a human or a soldier tribal deck, I don't think that's those are going to be things though. We got pacifism. What do y'all think of pacifism these days? It's kind of weird pacifism art also. So yeah, this is a one of the iconic cards in Magic. One in a white enchantment enchant creature can't attack or block. Um. Yeah. All 
So Red Rock asks, do you think the set is worth the pre-purchase price in Arena? That's kind of something that you kind of have to answer answer for yourself kind of thing. Um, I don't know. Like we're still kind of in the at the beginning of the set, so I haven't you know we haven't gone through everything right now. But if you plan on like opening a bunch of packs for the set, the pre-order price is good kind of kind of thing also. But uh, overall, core sets are usually less powerful than other sets kind of thing. Um, is this the Lorwyn art of pacifism? I guess I hadn't I hadn't, hadn't seen the Lorwyn one. Lorwyn was like the right before I started playing. So like you know I know a lot of the Lorwyn cards. Of course I played modern so much, but I I didn't know this specific art. This th that's actually what I was thinking of whenever I saw this art. Like it does look like a Lorwyn card. So yeah, so I think great limited card. Yes, constructed. I don't I don't even think this is like I'm trying to think if we can give this anything more than the limited rating for constructed like would you ever play this in your sideboard whenever you're trying to like if your sideboard has cards like baffling end and stuff like that right now would you want pacifisms in your sideboard like do you want this against like mono red kind of thing or like you know like whatever aggro deck so like if you put this on a steamkin they still get to activate their steamkin and get all the mana from that and everything uh, put it on a Benelish Marshal. They still get to get, have their creatures gain plus, you know, plus one, plus one kind of thing. Uh, it could be okay against the gods, but, like, the decks that are playing gods are probably going to be playing ways to, like, get rid of the pacifism pretty easily kind of thing. I th I think it is just limited rating. Two. I think that's where we're at. Um, planar cleansing. Three white, white, white. Destroy all non-land permanents. All right. So we get to destroy all the planeswalkers and play all the creatures. If your opponent goes command the dread horde for a bunch, if they go mass manipulation for a bunch. You get to destroy all those non-land permanents. A couple of things about this. This does not kill creatures that Nyssa makes that are lands. So that's that's annoying. You know, like if they if they have like a Nyssa out that they've activated a couple of times, have have like some three threes that are beating you down, your plane your planar cleansing here is doing nothing for you. So that's something to to note there. Um Nyssa seems to be pretty good against like some of the other sweepers in the set also, but uh, yeah, so that's that's definitely something annoying here with planning, planar cleansing. And then, of course, it does cost white, white, white. Triple white, you know, again, is going to limit the amount of decks it can really see pl play in. Um, so I don't. So actually, I don't think... So, yeah, comparing this to Star of Extinction, it does cost one less than Star of Extinction, and that's a big deal. There's a big difference between six and seven mana. But it's a lot worse than Star of Extinction as a card because it doesn't kill the lands like how the nissa lands and it and star of extinction also blows up a land which is really nice when you have lands like you know as and and so on like there's there's good lands in standard um yeah and with yeah this weakness to nissa just is really kind of turning me off to planar cleansing because the nissa decks are the decks you want planar cleansing against like that's that's what planar cleansing is supposed to do is stop these nissa decks that are just playing millions of mana creatures and just really flooding the board. That's where you want your planar cleansing against. And it doesn't... Yeah, it does kill Nyssa, yes. But like when you spend six mana, like you're, prob like you're behind when you're playing this card, right? So you're like already behind, you're getting beaten down by like the lands, and then you spend six mana, so you spend your entire turn uh, just trying to get this planar cleansing to resolve. It resolves... And you still have to deal with however many three threes that they made lands that are still going to be attacking you again, and you know then you're going to take more damage and you have to try to regroup still, but you were already behind when you played this. That's tough. That's tough. Um, that is true. It is, it is a, a wrath that's not dead against like some control decks. That's true. It, it's it seems like it's better against like Esper control that's just sitting there with a bunch of planeswalkers kind of thing. Um, so yeah, 
I think this is kind of like a, a C, a powerful card that'll see play in some fringe decks or fringe sideboard card kind of thing. But, you know, you do want to have, like, you need to be playing a, a type of deck that is, like, planning on being behind and not really playing a whole lot of permanents and everything. It's a, it's a really kind of weird type of deck that you're going to want to be playing for Cleansing Nova also, which is going to really reduce the amount of, of uh, people playing this card. All right, we got Raise the Alarm. This card is awesome. I have I played a lot of this card the first time I was in standard with Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, two mana instant, create two one ones. It was awesome at the time. Uh, that instant speed was really, really uh, crucial. Make a couple one ones. It was really good. However, current standard, I think this is under too underpowered, and it does it doesn't have the synergies that it had before. Like with with again with like Jeskai Ascendancy, it was, it was crucial. Uh, instant speed is not valuable. It's instant speed is the least value it's ever least valuable it's ever been that I can ever remember because of three mana to fairy. Um, yeah, it's like we, yeah. I guess like Celestia tokens, you can play this with your Sapling migrations. Also, Sapling migration is feeling like just as good of a card or, or better because you know it has the kick part. Um, but yeah, it can work with Convoke stuff. It's sad. I, I do love me some Raise the Alarm, but I don't really expect it to make any waves in Standard at all. Which is sad. So we'll go with like D. D? Yeah, D. Here for Raise the Alarm. Makes me really sad. Because I have played many tournaments with Raise the Alarm, done very well in tournaments with this card. Used to play this card all the time. Just not this is not a standard format for it though. Alright, rule of law. Two and a white enchantment. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Hmm. So what is like this is of course this this is basically a cyborg card. But besides like the red finale, like the red finale is the most obvious thing against Desert Phoenix, and yeah, there's so many cards against Desert Phoenix. Like, is it Phoenix may just kind of be dead? For all these cards that we're playing um, against it here. Like, are there really like combo decks here in, in standard? Like what what decks does this really stop in standard besides like is it Phoenix? Is there anything else the rule of law is good against? Nexus. Is this really stopping Nexus? Cuz it kind of is. Yeah. They can only cast their Nexus each turn, they can't cast anything else. If they have the Tamio in play, that's fine. Or you know, if they have the Ascanta in play, like if they have Ascanta or Tamio in play and they're Nexusing. Um, yeah, Alexis Bros, I kind of agree with you. It does seem like we do have a lot of that's that's really what this set seems like. Uh, future historic format. We just have like a bunch of random hate cards in this core set. It does. Um, Teshar combo. Okay, yeah, if Teshar combo becomes a thing, I've definitely heard, been hearing some people talk about Teshar combo with this with this set. Um, basically, that's that's about all I've heard is. <laughs> People just mentioning Teshar combo with some stuff in the set. I don't remember exactly what with it, but we'll we'll be going through. We'll be finding it. Um, no, it doesn't. Or yes, it does work on creatures. Yes, yeah, so for like mono white and mono red. So like yeah, like if you play this, your mono white opponent can only play one creature a turn. But you're like, it costs three mana. Like. Mono white, as we like yesterday, we played against mono white a couple of times where they went like one drop and then two drop and then one 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 Luxodon, and then on your turn three, you're gonna play your rule of law, but you're already dead. 
So yeah, if so yeah, against red deck wins with Frenzy. It is good against Frenzy, but we also have Graph Digger's Cage in this set. The Graph Digger's Cage is just a lot better against Frenzy and it costs a single colorless mana. It's an artifact and can go in any deck. So not expecting this one to see any play. Uh, we'll go like should I go D minus or limp or L for limited? Like is this is gonna see any play whatsoever in sideboards. I don't think so. I think L. Like, it's good against Is It Phoenix, but there's better cards in standard against Is It Phoenix. All right, we got Safara, Sky's Blade, four white, 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 or you may pay a single white and tapped four untapped creatures you control with flying rather than paying this spell's mana cost. It's a 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink creature where other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. This card is awesome. I love this card. This is my kind of card. I'm going to be playing some flyers and everything. This is the kind of card I'd like to build around you know, right away with this standard format. Is this going to be tier 1 in standard? No. So this is definitely going to be fringe kind of decks, but this is, this is the kind of card that I will be building some fringe decks around. Um, so yeah, so janky build around card for a D, but I'm going to give it a plus. So there we go. D plus. Could it be a powerful card to see some play in some fringe decks? Maybe. Could this be like your, you know, like your Bola Citadel type? The, you know, it's a good card see, like for some fringe decks. I could see that with this let's go C minus let's bump it up um, yeah this could be a day one Todd card you know we'll be doing a 12 hour stream of course on Tuesday whenever uh, M20 comes out we'll be brewing up decks on Tuesday probably playing you know like five six different decks there during the 12 hours because you know it takes about two hours a deck probably so like uh, probably playing like six different decks and I could see yeah, this this is probably a day one deck. So yeah, M M20 is going to be out on Tuesday. Um, here on Arena. Sahili. Sahili just makes... Uh, Sahili doesn't make flying creatures. Sahili makes servos that are on the ground. Um, this, this does work with Psy. Psy Master Thopterist that makes some some thopters if you have a, a blue white artifact side deck that has yeah dovins yeah that, that could be a thing yeah dovin and make some thopters and like that deputy card whatever that whatever that card was called that makes some thopters then you just have a bunch of one ones that are indestructible i don't know maybe there's something there maybe there's something there yeah spark double this the Safara, about that. Murmuring Mystic. So then you'd have to be playing a whole bunch of instants and sorceries. So then it's like, why do, why do we have the Safara in our deck? But again, that, that could be something there with like the the Deploy. That's the card I'm thinking of, Deploy. That deploys a couple of 1-1s. Uh, one Probably not too much with Arcbo. I mean... Activating Arc Bow for seven is just is just so much. Probably not an Arc Bow. Yeah. But yeah, yep. Deploy on their end step. Untap. <laughs> All right, you got Soul Mender. One mana, one one. Tap it. You gain a life. No. I know there are cards in the set like that we talked about like at the beginning of this white set review that had to deal with having you know 25 or more life and when you regain life you gain some extra lives all that kind of stuff so i guess yeah and pride mate and everything and we do have that at johnny i guess 
I guess. All right, D minus. You'll you'll see this card in standard, maybe, and just you know, like whenever you're playing like your leagues and stuff. Uh, so I guess we're not going to go with just a limited rating, but yeah. Uh, Safara, I gave Safara a C minus. Um, you know, basically a, a powerful card for fringe decks kind of thing. Maybe just a C. Maybe it is just a powerful card for fringe decks. Safara's just cool. I just like Safara. Let's go C. All right, squad captain. Uh, five mana, two two, vigilant ETB with a one one counter on it for each other creature you control. Could be pretty big. Could be pretty big. You have three creatures. It's a five mana, five five, vigilant. If you have three other creatures in play, maybe play that in your limited deck. That's an L. Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Starfield Mystic. <laughs> one in a white, two, two. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a counter on a Starfield Mystic. Hmm. Are we making an enchantment deck? Enchantments are kind of bad these days with these Teferis and everything. Enchantments are kind of not good. Um, so yeah, D to D minus. You know, there's not really enchantments you're gonna want to be playing. But it is that is true. Two mana two two as like the floor is not terrible, especially with like you know Johnny adversary tyrants and everything. Just having two drops in like your deck is not terrible, and you know can't grow like. Two mana, three, three is good. So if you have an enchantment is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you get a counter on it and like you have your two mana, three, three now, like that's, that's a pretty good rate, but, um, you know, you do need your enchantments to be leaving, I suppose. It is a bear. Uh, we have the sagas. That's, that's a good call. So like this into history, Benalia. Okay. Okay. I forgot about sagas. It's so like whenever the history banalia goes to the graveyard, you put a counter on this thing. You know, there's sagas and stuff. That's pretty cool. It does make your history banalia cost one less, so it only costs white, white. That's kind of cool. So, like, if you play Star, like, let's say you just have a mono white deck, or you have like this random mono white deck, where you have Starfield Mystic that you play on turn two. On turn three, you can play History of Benalia for white, white, and then like Baffling End also for just white. Because, you know, you're. So, like, turn three, you could be double spelling with History of Benalia and Baffling End. Okay. Okay. Now, now we're kind of doing it. There's a reanimate enchantment. And yeah, like, so. With Conclave Tribunal, Conclave Tribunal would only cost three mana instead of four. Plus, you're using this to convoke, so you only need, like, two other mana with Conclave Tribunal and this thing. Hmm. Can we get Angelic Destiny? Is that... No, Angelic Destiny is not the name of the card. What's the card from Guilds of Ravnica? The, the five-mana enchantment that, like, whenever you make other tokens, you make four fours? Could you, like, play that with this card in History Banalia? So like you only make it it only costs four mana to like play that thing instead of five. Divine Visitation, yeah, that thing. And then yeah, you have yeah, you have Legion's Landing. Yep, you legend rule your Legion's Landing, so it leaves, you get a counter. And Legion's Landing works really well with uh, obviously with with Divine Visitation also. Okay. Alright, we're putting we're putting a deck together. So there's a black enchantment that returns to the battlefield when the creature dies. So we have to take a look at that. But yeah, then you have Eldest Reborn. Like, this card's pretty sweet with Eldest Reborn. Four mana Eldest Reborn sounds sweet. So yeah, maybe we can go with an Orzov enchantment deck. All right. So that sounds like a D. So not just not just an F. I feel like we can make a, 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 a fringe deck around this thing. 
a janky build around card. Yeah, it sounds like a, a cool janky build around card. Starfield Mystic. I like it. Oh yeah, Dawn of Hope to go with Divine Visitation. All right. I would put cool janky build around. That's a bit. That's a good one. All right, Steadfast Sentry, uh, three mana, three two vigilant. Whenever it dies, put a one one counter on target creature you control. Nope. All right, let's give that one the L for limited. And yoked oak, yoked ox, yoked ox. There we go, yoked ox. I wasn't really looking at the card over there, but yeah, yoked ox. That's also getting the L for limited. That one could be a sideboard card against like a, an aggressive deck. If there's like an aggressive like deck that's playing a whole bunch of three twos, and you want your O four to block, but yeah. Good, yeah, good and limited control decks, and like the like blue white flyers and limited, get your yoke doxes to to clog the ground and get your blue white flyers going. In limited, cool. Oh yeah, Dovin Security could be one. All right, so that's our uh, set review for white here for core set twenty twenty. That's our standard set review. Uh, not a whole lot of like great cards, but the core sets are kind of like that. So cards that we gave like the, the best ratings to here, God's Willing was the best card in, in white that we gave a B plus to. Um, other cards that got like B or higher, we had Devout Decree, we gave a B minus. Cavalier of Dawn, the B minus. And that was it for things that were higher than the C there. Um, but of course, as I talked about at the beginning, my grading scale is a little tough. Like it's really hard to get A's and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes with the other colors. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, make sure you click on over to blue that's the next color that we'll be covering here for corset 2020 uh let me know what you think in the comments let me know if there's any cards that you're a lot higher on uh than i am any cards that you're excited to be brewing around that we didn't talk about uh you know anything that we missed here let us know in the comments so other people can check that out also uh, but thank you so much for watching uh part one here of our corset 2020 standard set review, and I'll see you for the next color.